This video tutorial is brought to you by TipSquirrel at www.tipsquirrel.com. For all the best Photoshop and Lightroom tips, follow at TipSquirrel on Twitter or go to facebook.com slash tipsquirrel. Hi everybody, Mike Hoffman here. And for today's tip, we're going to be talking about creating multiple images with Photoshop using placeholders and variables. This is a technique that you might find useful if you're doing, for example, sports team photography, or maybe putting together some playing cards for a gag for your friends or your business colleagues. In this case, we're going to be taking a bunch of spices and placing them on this background, and we're going to be modifying the words here at the bottom to show the name of the spices. Now we could place a multitude of different images in here, and I've got one already placed in position underneath the border and the labels. And we could go in each time that we place a new image, and we could modify this text, but that's a lot of work. And if you've been following my tutorials, you know that I'm always trying to find the most efficient way to accomplish my projects. In this case, we're going to use data sets. And while it sounds scary, it's not really very difficult at all. Let me show you what we're going to do. Here in the Finder, I've got a folder called Spices, and I've got a few images in here. I've got cinnamon, I've got cloves, I've got fennel, and I've got paprika. And we want to create one of these cards for each one of the different spices. What I've done is I've created an Excel spreadsheet and I'll show you how that looks. It looks just like this. And what I did is I created two columns. The first one is for the spice, and I listed the name of the spice. And the second one is the image. And this is the image of the spice that I want to place into my document. Now it's important that we format it this way with these columns at the top. Now I'm using Microsoft Excel, but I do want to point out that it's also quite possible to do this with Google Docs, which is freely available on the web. So I'm going to show you both processes. And I've created essentially the same spreadsheet in both places. So let's go back to Photoshop. Here in Photoshop, what I'm going to do first of all is throw away this image because we're going to use this blank layer at the bottom and we're going to swap it out. And what we're going to do is we're going to tell Photoshop what text we want to replace here and what image we want to put on the background. The way we do that is by going to the image menu and here under variables we find the word define. We're going to click that and now we're in the define process and what we've got to do is we've got to define the things that we want Photoshop to swap out for us according to our data file and we've made it simple here we've only got two things we've got an image and we've got some text so notice that my image layer is highlighted, and that's reflected right here. So I'm working on the image layer, and what can I do? I can change the visibility of that layer, or I can do pixel replacement. And the visibility can be off or on. But in this case, I'm going to leave it on, and I'm going to go with pixel replacement. Now, it wants me to give a name for this variable. And this is where the tricky part comes in. It's not very tricky. What we need to do is we need to use this word right here at the top of this column, image. So we're going to place that right here in this dialog box, image. And then because I've already resized these, I'm going to place them as is, center aligned. But notice that you have other options here. You could fill the frame, you can fit the image to the frame, or you can stretch it to conform it to the size. In this case, I've already pre-sized my images to the right size, so again, I'm going to choose as is with center alignment. At this point, because I've defined the variable name image, it's going to be looking in the column marked image of my spreadsheet. And I'll go back to that spreadsheet one more time. It's going to be looking in this column for the names of the images that it's going to place. We'll go back to Photoshop again, and now we're going to start clicking these arrows here. And as I click, notice the layers change, and I can scroll through all the layers in my dialog box. The one I'm interested in 
is spices. And spices is a text layer, and it currently just has the word spices. But I'm going to do a text replacement. And notice that because this is a text layer, we have a different type of replacement. On the image layer, we had pixel replacement. On the text layer, we have text replacement. And here we've got a variable. And once again, I'm going to refer to my spreadsheet. And the variable name I'm going to use is spice. So we'll go back to Photoshop, and I'm going to put the word spice in here. So now it's going to look for the column called spice, and it's going to retrieve the text that's in that column. I'll click on OK. Now we've defined our data set, and it's time to apply it. And we could have more than one, and we can reuse these over and over again. But here's what we have to do. If I go back to Microsoft Excel, I'm looking at an Excel spreadsheet. I want to export this into a text format. And the way that I do that in Excel is to choose File, Save As, and then I'm going to change the format from the Excel workbook to comma separated values, .csv. I click on Save, and that will save a file. And you can see I've already created this file, spicelist.csv. All that does is creates a text file with commas in between the fields and quotation marks around it. Now if I look at the same file on Google Drive, we can accomplish the same thing. We can choose File, Download As, and then we choose Comma Separated Values. And once again, this will download a .csv file that we'll need to use in Photoshop. So I've already created my .csv file, and we can see it right here in the Finder. And we can even view this file. If I open it with the Text Edit application, we can see what this looks like as a text file. Simply commas delimiting the fields. Paprika, comma, and then paprika.jpg, and so on for each line. So with this CSV file created, We'll go back to Photoshop one more time. Now we'll go back to our image menu. We'll choose variables. And this time we'll choose data sets, since we've already defined our variables. Within this dialog box, we click on Import. And here we'll select a file, navigate to the hard drive where we have the CSV file that we created, and click on Open. We're going to simply click on OK here to accept the default. And now we can see that we've got a data set. And here the image is cinnamon.jpg, and the spice is named cinnamon. And these are the layers that those variables apply to. Now if I click on the word preview, we can see that the image has been swapped in on this layer. And there it is and the text has been updated. Now while we're in preview mode, we can click through the data set. So we can go to the next item by clicking this arrow. And now we can see that the image in the picture has been updated. We're looking at the cloves and the text has been updated as well. We can click once more and here's our fennel. We can click once more and here's our paprika. So we can see here that we now have access to all four different images, and we can change between them very easily simply by clicking these arrows. We'll click on OK, and this brings us back to our original image. So what good is that, you might ask? Well, we could have gone in here and chose our data sets, and we could have clicked Apply, and that would have applied one at a time, and we could go in and save our data that way. But I've got something even better. So once again, we'll click OK. We've defined our data set. We've got it applied to the file. What we'll do now is we'll go to File, and then we'll click on Export, and then we'll click on Data Sets as Files. Now we get this dialog box to export our data sets as separate files. So we can choose any one of the four or we could choose all of them. And we'll leave it 
set to all of them. Select a folder and I'm simply going to export to the desktop and I'll create a new folder and I'll call this output. I'll click create and choose and now we have our file naming and we can name this however we want. In this case I'm going to give it a name spices followed by an underscore and since we didn't really name our data set we'll use the data set number. So we'll have spices underscore one, spices underscore two, etc. We can choose our file extension which could be upper or lower case and then we can choose the kind of compatibility. This is always a good idea for the file names. And then we'll click on OK. You can see very quickly Photoshop ran through the four files. And if I switch over to the finder, we can look at the output folder and there are our four PSD files. And if I switch to bridge, we can go back and browse that folder and we can see the four images that were created. And we've got each one individually marked with its own label according to our file and with its own image. So if you use your imagination, you could easily envision a sports team with the names and the positions and so forth, other data included. You could envision uh, nature cards with different types of animals and the names of the animals or birds. You could envision team cards for your business colleagues. There are many different applications for this type of approach. I hope you'll experiment with this and I hope you'll try it. It can be quite useful when you're dealing with large quantities of parametric data and it can save you quite a bit of time. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of Photoshop, Lightroom, and photography tips and tricks and related information there. You can follow me at mhoffman2001 on Twitter and you can find me on Google Plus by simply going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial.